Listening to Sports on Tap, part of the NEO Sports Insiders Network. Here are your hosts, Rob Troutman, Josh Jeffy, Ed Dick, and Sean Duffy. That is bad. And welcome to Sports on Tap. We're live from Z's Cream and Bean in Hinkley, Ohio. I'm Rob Trotman. We have Josh Jeffy, Sean Duffy, and Ed Dick. And, guys, welcome back. Um, we have a jam-packed show for you here tonight. Certainly. Um, and want to thank, first off, uh, Amherst Baseball joins us here tonight. And uh, they've had a really successful season, 25-5 and five this season. Uh, they'll join us here in, in a minute or so. But, guys, uh, how's it been going so far? Uh, had a little bit of time off, and we're back at it here tonight. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Hot mic. Wow. My bad. Sean's wow. Man. Sean's a little excited rusty. here. You guys all, the I mean, here. I just said, yeah. That's all I said. And blew out man, ears. That's what happens. Up over there. Jeez. Yeah. It's <laughs> everyone. This guy's every... heading his uh, daughter's playoff run coming up here soon. Yeah, yeah right. A <laughs> little too much time off, I guess. Been good. Wish these calves would turn around, but, you know. Yeah. I, well, we could have a we whole could, show yeah, on that. Yeah, there's a so whole. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that another we'll time. We'll divert from that. Yeah. You know, just as a. You know, the summertime, you know, the high school season, you know, high school year changes over. Yep. You know, right now we're, you know, we just ended baseball. You know, we have a, a tremendous team here, tremendous players here. We're going to talk about their seasons. And then, you know, before we know it, the, the fall sports ramp up. You know, football, yeah. soccer. Football, yep. Um, you know, those types of sports. And you know, we'll, we will have an appearance from the Brunswick men's soccer team uh, a little bit later uh, in the show. But we're very, very happy to have back-to-back uh, Southwestern Conference champions here and the uh, Amherst Steel comments that we're uh, you know, looking, to, looking forward to talking to. Yeah, and they are, are also uh, sectional champions, district champions. Um, they were the state poll champions for the first time in school history. And, I mean, this senior class, and, and we have uh, four captains here, they finished with 89 wins, that's which a is lot. a school record, which is, I mean, that's impressive. Yeah. Um, and then uh, head coach Matt Rosatano, 129 and 46 career record. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> I mean. um, and, and actually, he was named Northeast Ohio Coach of the Year just today. Oh, congratulations. So, so Coach, congratulations, and uh, thanks for joining us here tonight. Thank you, man. Uh, we're really glad to be here. Thanks for having us. Um, you know, you were the 2018 Lorain County Coach of the Year, um, Southwestern Conference Coach of the Year this year, and Ohio Coach of the Year. So congratulations. And welcome back to Sports on Tap. We are live here at Z's Cream and Bean, 2706 Boston Road in Hinkley, Ohio. It does border four cities. There it is. It borders Brunswick. Hinkley. Strongsville. He's asleep. I mean, wow. asleep. Sorry, I'm kind of wow. doing stuff here. Hey, my man. goodness. You can't my ears over there? No, no he I just can't. didn't know what else bordered oh, where we're at. That's North Royalton. Yeah. North Royalton. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> North Royalton. <laughs> This is why. Wait, this is why we can't nice things, Josh. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. <laughs> oh wait, he forgot to hit record, right? No, you did that <laughs> exactly. My so God. are we so recording? <laughs> yes, yes, we, we are. are live. We are live once again at Z's Group and Bean. Uh, these all of our shows are archived on our on our YouTube channel, Sports on Tap. They are also on our website at sportsontappodcast.com. Uh, we, we just had on the uh, Amherst baseball team. Uh, had a tremendous year, twenty-five and five. Uh, back-to-back conference, champi- uh, conference champions. They were uh, ranked number one in the state at the end of the year, made it to the Sweet 16. Uh, just a tremendous year for them overall. And we follow that up with another tremendous team, a uh, team that we're quite familiar with. I think we're on friend of show status now uh, with their <laughs> head think, coach. I would think. Uh, the Brunswick men's soccer team, uh, led by head coach Ben Dotson. A uh, couple stats about him real quick. He is... The two-time defending Greater Cleveland Conference Coach of the Year. He was the Greater Akron Coach of the Year in 16. Uh, Medina County Sports Awards Coach of the Year in 14. And Medina Gazette Coach of the Year in 14. Uh, this dude's uh, done quite a lot of good things for the uh, for the Brunswick football, the Brunswick soccer program. I was going to say football in a good way. But, you know, European. It's fine. <laughs> football. Um, you know, just a tremendous year. 
Uh, Coach Dodson, thank you very much for coming back on. How, is, uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having us on again. We really appreciate coming back. I think this is number four. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I definitely lost, a friend I of show, count. right? Definitely oh, a friend yeah, of show absolutely. status. Um, you know, you guys had a, I mean, you guys had a great year last year. Um, you know, just a, a couple of things. I mean, they were seven and zero and zero in in the conference play. They were undefeated in the very very tough Greater Cleveland Conference. Um, you know, we'll we'll start we'll start there. I mean, I, I can't remember the last time Brunswick's went undefeated in the, in the conference to this level of success. It's because it's never happened before. First time we beat since 1988 that we beat Strong's Lamb Dine in the same season. You know, it, you know, we had three conference cha- or I'm sorry, two conference championships up until two years ago, and now we have four. Wow. Yeah, we just had an absolute tremendous run over the last two years. We haven't lost a conference game in over two years, so we're pretty proud of where we're at. Hey, you know, sustained success is where it's, it's starting to get to that point where you're at now, Coach. I mean, how have you been able to, how have you been able to, to take the players you have and can, and, and not only build up to this point, but now try to sustain it going forward. I think a lot of it is more or less the culture that we've installed in the program. You know, the boys are tremendous in, in, the, in the fact that we have five core values that we very much try to hold true to. Hard work, dedication, community, soccer excellence, and tradition. And, it's, and going back to those values on a daily basis has really brought the program forward. You know, two and three years ago, before we started having all the success, we didn't have the greatest teams, but we definitely we definitely outworked every team that we played and we had a tremendous locker room where we could rely on each other to do some wonderful wonderful things and that has led us to where we're at now and, and we have uh four of your uh four returning players that are going to be a big part uh, a big part of what you have going on uh definitely next year if not in the future uh so to my right uh we have uh ryan Utrup, senior midfielder we have aaron ogrezali senior defender uh, Coach Dotson again. Gentleman I'm very familiar with, uh, junior midfielder Justin Hagler, and then uh, sophomore Cole Peretti, uh, sophomore midfielder. Guys, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. It's uh, nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be here. <laughs> All right, uh, so Aaron, we'll start with you. Um, you know, y- you've been a part of this program now. This will be your fourth year in the program. Yeah. Um, you, you've experienced this, this success, as Coach talked about, from you know almost from the beginning. Where you know describe this past year and, and you know what you guys been building in towards to get to this year. So I mean, this past year, you've I've seen a lot of growth, and it's really amazing to see when when we all come together, we're just that unstoppable force, and I like to see that to take that farther, and it'll be great. Hey, uh, Aaron was an honorable mention All Greater Akron. Uh, from 2017, and also honorable mention all Madonna County. Um, no, you, you may you you may not have the the the, the, like the most gaudy of stats, but as a defender, you you hold down the fort back there. And I understand you had a, a major goal in 2016 uh, to to help put a, put you over the top to get to your first conference championship. You know, for yourself personally, talk about how where you, where you've been and where where you're at now. Well, it it's been. I feel it's just been. It's been a very bumpy ride. I mean, starting with my freshman year, I strained my hip flexor, and I didn't get a lot of games in. Then coming back my sophomore year, I had a vulgar fracture in my other hip. And then with that goal, that just that put me in a position where I had more confidence and just, like, gave me that more of a fire. And I just kept going with that. And finally my junior year, I had a success, successful full year, and I just kept going. It felt really good. You know, and a lot of the, the players we have here are, you know, you have a, a fresh or a sophomore, junior, um, you play with freshmen. What do you do as a, a senior coming up to really help these guys, um, you know, whether it's to teach them, you know, part of the defense or, or what you've seen from offensive teams out there? What do you, you kind of help these guys down the line, you know, from your experience? Yeah, you, I mean, you just got to gotta lead them. You got to be patient, maybe help them out, like when you see certain things. When you see little things, help them out, start there, and then you start showing them, like, what you learned and what you can see. And, yeah, it just takes a lot of patience and help them out. I, mean, I think the biggest thing with Aaron is how much of a leader he is by example. You know, he comes and brings it every single day. He's the guy you don't want to play against in training. And that attitude is what rubs off on our younger guys. Yeah, I'm sure they look to you, um, you know, for whether it's that confidence or, or just to, to help them get through maybe a tough time. I mean, um, you're the senior now, so you're, you're going to be the leader of this team. 
Um, how do you help develop these guys? I mean, do they look to you? Um, do they ask you good questions that, you know, you can help say, well, from previous experience, I know this offense pretty well or, or this defense? Yeah, you know, they, they look up to all of us, all the older guys, and they might, yeah, they'll ask me some questions, maybe ask them, but it's just, yeah, it's showing them, like, what you know and – just everything, because you just got to push them, maybe push them around a little bit, show them how <laughs> it is. That, that helps a lot, but. Yeah, as yeah, I say, just, you got to learn from mistakes, yeah. right? Yeah, that's how, yeah. You know, one question I ask everybody coming in, or I like asking athletes and coaches especially, is, you know, your season is, is coming up. I mean, you have the summer, you, you're going to put in that work, whatever it is, with your club teams, things like that. What are, what are some goals you guys have set for yourselves to kind of come into to hit the ground running essentially and continue the great momentum that you've had uh, in previous seasons. I mean, given what, what Coach Dotson says, the tradition is there for this for this program. So is there that pressure there? Is there goals that you guys are maybe not verbalizing but have in your mind that what you want to get started with in the beginning of the season to build towards the end? Yeah, I mean, like one goal is just staying together because, I mean, sometimes we have our ups and downs, but once we stay together, it's it's truly special. And once we do that, you know, we can take what we did last year and even, like, step up from that. So uh, that's a big, big goal. Now, Ryan Utrip, um, he's a senior uh, midfielder, three-year letter winner, um, and um, Greater Cleveland Co Conference uh, Scholar Athlete 2016-2017. I mean, congratulations on, on that. That's very impressive. And, and talk a little bit about your season. Um, you're another uh, a senior coming up. Um, what do you look forward to? I mean, you had a great season this year. What do you want to build on from this year and move into next season? Uh, this year is definitely going to be different than last year. We're a different team, and we're a lot of different guys. But uh, we're going to look to come together a lot, and we're going to have to play a lot differently. We're going to, again, all play together and it starts with us four, and it's just going to be fun. We're going to have fun playing. I mean, is that tough from year to year? You probably have to switch, like, your defense or, or offensively. Is that tough for you players and, and even the coach from year to year? I'm sure you want to change schemes. Is that pretty tough for kids to really pick up on? We don't change too much. We have, we have a similar style. We just, okay. It's just the way we accentuate those changes. Okay. You know, we build around the strengths that we have. But traditionally, we're a pressing team that likes to keep the ball, and that doesn't change the year over year. It's really just how you fit the personnel together is that big puzzle to put it together. Okay. And for you, you probably enjoy that if there's not a ton of change going on so you can remember, build on from year to year. Yeah, and it all starts with the coaching staff. Like, <laughs> they've all just made it easy for us year to year, and it kind of all blends together. You know, and last year, a lot of you guys, you know, a ton of you guys' success, and you guys scored a ton of goals last year, and a lot of them were scored by Nick Felician. I mean, he's the first All-American in school history. Um, how do you guys collectively fill that void as you uh, moving forward? I think the main word that you said is collectively. You know, we're not going to be a one-man show. You know, Nicholas is an unbelievable player. He's a wonderful kid, and we'll miss him dearly, but – as a group, we have things to prove on our own, and we're going to have to do it, as, as Aaron and Ryan have said, staying together as a group because we're going to be challenged, you know, and they're not going to be able to shut down one guy. They're going to have to shut down all of us. Um, for Ryan, um, he's, he's actually injured. He tore um, his PCL. Um, how's that been going for you? I know it's probably tough, you know, not be able to do soccer things right now other than, you know, probably letting it heal and then do some rehabbing. How are you doing and, and going to rehab that soon? Well, it's only been a week. It happened last Sunday in a club soccer game. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm getting an MRI on Thursday. Okay. So that'll tell me, like, more clearly how long I'll be out. And I'm just trying to stay positive. Hopefully it's only for a couple weeks. And I'll be back trying to get fit for his crazy standards. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, Coach, do you have some uh, – I mean, are you going to let that slide or is he going to have to do this fitness test on one leg? I mean – what what are what are you gonna do with yeah, that? One leg's good, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying no adjust way. the standard, sure, but still got to do it. <laughs> we, uh, oh, man. we we do have a, a major injury component to to every fitness test that we have, based off how many weeks they're proven fit by a medical physician. Is is we have a table of where they should be, mm -hmm. based off those tests, and he's got to perform to those standards. Okay. So one legged races up the stairs. I got it. I got it. I'm in. <laughs> okay. I get two legs, though. So I've, told, I, I've torn my PCL in the past before, and I'm not nearly as fit as you are, so I think you'll be all right. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs>
Uh, he's, he's a lot more spry right now than I would be if a, I tore my PCL. Yeah. Just a smidge. <laughs> uh, so an, another uh, another athlete here. We have uh, Justin Hagler. He's going to be entering his junior year. Uh, last year, he earned his first varsity letter on uh, both football and soccer. Um, he is a first team All Madonna County uh, player, honorable mention All Conference. He had a team high 12 assists, so a total of 20 points, second on team in the scoring, of course, to Mr. Felician. Uh, Justin, uh, you know, talk about your season last year and, and what improvements you think you've made up to this year so far. Yeah, so um, my freshman year, I was small and I was short. You were? And <laughs> <laughs> Not false. God, he's getting it from in both. The, in the off season, I grew, I grew like six inches. Wow. And I think that really helped my game. It helped me. I made the varsity team my sophomore year, and I had a great season. And uh, now over this off season, I've been working on my uh, weightlifting. He had a great season. Just ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Justin's not afraid to tell you how great he is. <laughs> He's very confident. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. I. No. That's. So I mean, as a midfielder, I mean, both you, know, Ryan, you can speak to this as well. I mean, you guys. You guys are you know, probably arguably the more the most fit on the team, being you have to have, have a big role offensively and defensively. Um, Cole apparently disagrees with this, but <laughs> yeah, he's uh, laughing uh, about that laughing. one. Okay, that's fair. Um, I was a forward, so I can't speak to that. But we're not, regardless, <laughs> not a very good one, by the way. That, no, <laughs> fair. <laughs> you know, so for you guys, I mean, how you know, working on your fitness levels, especially as your bodies are changing. I mean, is, are you finding that to be a little bit harder, or is it a little bit easier now that you're getting to know yourselves a little bit better? I think. Every year it's gotten a little bit easier, but Ben really pushes us like past even how fit we are. You have to work harder every year to for his standards. Uh, yeah, like you said, every year it gets easier. And as your body changes, like if you get stronger, like Justin's trying to this year, I don't know how well he's doing with that. But yeah, you just like learn more about yourself and how hard you can push yourself. And Ben helps again with that. I mean, is that important, Coach? I mean, obviously, fitness in soccer is huge. I mean, you have to be in shape, and, and, and you know, you're running everywhere. I mean, and you want to outlast teams. I mean, you have the fitness test. Um, are, do a lot of these guys have to be to a certain of your standards before they can even see the field, or how do you work that? Yeah, so if they don't pass three out of the four tests that we have, they're not even eligible to play varsity. If, okay. in, if they don't pass two of them, they're not eligible for our JVA team. And if they don't pass one of them, they're not eligible to be in the program. Now, what are the tests that they have to, to pass? So we have four. We have okay. a two-mile test, um, a test that's called the gauntlet, uh, a beep test, which is like an interval test. Okay. And then um, Cooper run, which is like a run as far as you can in 12 minutes. And if they don't pass three of the four, like I said, they're not eligible. And the point is, you know, the style that we play, which is a very up-tempo, high-pressing style, it, it, similar to basketball, when you're just pressing all over the floor, if you can't do that on a soccer field, like that's how we create offense, how we create turnovers. And the way we play, if you can't do that, you're not going to be able to play for us. Yeah. Makes sense. I and cannot play for Brunswick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Justin, you know, you also play, obviously, you know, uh, you do play a little bit of football. Um, hopefully Coach uh, Dotson uh, doesn't get too pissed at me about this, but um, we'll keep him as safe as we can. You know, how have you been able to, you know, last year you, you had to step up and play a little bit of RC for us, and you, you had a great year on GV. How are you able to balance playing two sports out in the same season? Uh, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of work, especially balancing practices and all the work and how tired my legs get. But I really focus on getting as much rest as I can, stretching, making sure I just am able to do both. Make sure you don't get hurt for Coach Ben. I got yeah. it. We're yeah. good. As long as he doesn't take any hits like his freshman year when he got taken out, I think we'll that be right. That was a great tackle. <laughs> well, yeah, and last year he did push-ups because he thought he was tough after that one too against Shaker Heights, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Saves a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we have uh, Cole Peretti, uh, sophomore midfielder. You earned your first varsity letter as well. Honorable mention all conference and all county, and you were the only freshman to make both of those teams. So congratulations on, on your on your accomplishments last year. You know, how, how do you take that momentum from freshman year and build it coming into your sophomore year? I mean, just keep pushing myself. Like, keep pushing the team, too. Like, we're only going to be able to, like, accomplish our goals this year if we stay together. So just staying together. 
And it, 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 you know, I believe you played with your, your brother. Is uh, your brother was Colin? You know, he, yeah. he, had a, he had a relatively successful career too. So I mean, how much is that helping you? Would help you out personally, knowing that you know you, you had a you have an older brother who, you know, you, you want to either try to beat out or. or it's good. He <laughs> he pushes me all the time. So I always want to be better than him. So it pushes me that much harder. So you can push him back. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. I have a brother. He pushes me back. I don't know. Colin puts up about 240, and I don't think Cole's at that level yet. <laughs> <laughs> Does your brother help you though? Um, you know, whether you have questions or, you know, if you have a game that maybe didn't go your way, um, do you go to him and ask him? Um, for a little bit of help, and, and does he kind of guide you in a direction, or, or do you have somebody on the team that you kind of look up to? I mean, to? I have him, and I have everyone else. Like, he's always there. I always, ha I always have him to talk to, but I always have everyone else on the team too. So Yeah, that's helpful too. I mean. You know, the, the overarching theme you know, between all four of, your, of, of, of you guys and, you know, and, and for you, Coach, is all these, all these uh, players are they're scholar athletes in addition to being tremendous athletes. Uh, I mean, there's no better way to – promote student athlete than having the student part of it be exemplified as what you have here you know so that's a very very you know, that, that's very very impressive uh from your from your guys end there that's that's fantastic well thank you we're quite proud of our academic success i think we've received the state team academic award the last seven seasons and this last year we actually received the national team academic award as well which is a team gpa over 3.2 wow um and the boys work extremely hard at that and we're pretty proud of it so let's talk about a little bit about what's going into this year. I um, mean, we, we, you know, obviously we, 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 you're losing your top scorer, all world, uh, uh, old world um, player in Nick Felician. Um, what is it going to take for you guys? Out, you know, you know, maybe going a little bit more than sticking together and, and, and trying to pick up collectively. I, I think defensively, you know, we bring back three out of four starters, which will be a big help. Uh, we also bring back. Um, goalkeeper that started every game as a freshman he had an outstanding freshman campaign he's crewed to about six foot two he has an incredible wingspan and we're very excited to see how gavin ernst grows and then we'll add ryan mcconnell to the back line who who honestly he took the year off from club he committed himself to being in the weight room and he put on about 30 pounds of muscle um, so he will step in and do some very very big things for us and amongst those players we, we return seven starters and and i'm very excited about what those guys are bringing back you know, Nate Bohr is probably the best left back in school history. In the last two years, like 36 games since he's been starting, we've let up one goal from his side of the field. Wow. He's been absolutely fantastic. He will actually probably step up into the midfield this year. He's a bigger kid with broad shoulders who's going to help us out, win some 50-50 balls in the middle. Solid in distribution as well. So I think our foundation is going to be, you know, solid defensive play. Um, led by those guys that I just said and the guys that are that are around this table and then offensively it'll be a, a, a space and pace offense where we've got four three guys up front um, that are very very fast and we'll put a ton of pressure on the other group it'll take us a couple weeks to figure out how to score without Nick but once we hit that once we get to that point I think this group can do a lot of damage in the district tournament I don't see I really feel that like we can get out of the district this year which will be the first time in 24 years which would wow. be a really big deal. Yeah, you guys play in the meat grinder of a district. I mean, you, you get through the you get through the regular season of the Greater Cleveland Conference, and I know you schedule tough teams out, out of conference to prepare them. You know, but talk about the district. I mean, it's it, there's there's no easy game in that, and no easy match in the district. No, I mean, you look at I mean, our opening round game was against Wooster, who had 17 seniors, a junior who was all state. And they, at one point in the season, they were ranked 14th in the state. That was our opening round game. And then we go to play Medina, who we had already beaten, who's a state finalist in the third round. That's absolutely asinine. It, it, Ohio High School's got to do something about it. But to get out of our district really means something, and I feel like we can do that this year. You know, one of the things that I'm, I'm catching on as far as a theme is staying together. Uh, that's what you guys want to do. Are you – guys actively playing together in club teams i know you guys may not have organized team activities because of the ohio high school athletic rules but are you guys playing club with each other you know, obviously you're probably not doing much of anything at this point but are you guys playing club over the summer to kind of keep that cohesiveness going into the season or is it one of those things you kind of have to learn during kind of training camp and things like that well uh, most of us are on separate teams so the for club it's usually you know getting our touches like keeping that consistent and also staying fit so there are a few guys on the same team and it's possible for them to work together but mm -hmm. 
for us, a lot of us, it's just, you know, staying fit and keeping our touches. It's kind of difficult with all different ages we have. Like, we have two seniors here, a junior and a sophomore. And uh, in club, you'll, you play with just people that are the same age as you. Okay. But what really helps is we have a preseason that's two-ish months long. It seems really long. Wow. And that's when we get to, like, come a lot closer as a team and learn how to play with each other again. Yeah, like Brian was saying, I think we really come together in the summer, like, during our fitness when we're, when we're all struggling together. <laughs> And uh, especially during team camp, which is like three days, two nights, where we all just, we're all together for like 48 hours and we're all just bonding. We have bonding time and we play together. And it's a Very cool. good time to come together. And I know, Cole, you had a training, it says, a week ago with the U.S. soccer tryout in Cincinnati. How was that? Uh, it was a lot of fun. I got to meet some like cool coaches. And uh, one of the head guys was like uh, 2002, like national team head coaching. He's, that was pretty cool. And it was, wow. like, all the players that were really good, and, like, I got to see the level that I always need to be playing at. So, Does that, when, when you see that, does that push you even harder to be better and better when you go to those? I'm sure you learn a lot, too. Yeah, going to that. definitely. Like, it pushes me that much harder because I know my goals and where I want to go. Very cool. You know, Coach, how have you been able to, uh, you know, w with the success on the high school level, how is that, uh, do, you, do you notice that trickling down to the low, to the lower levels, like into the travel leagues, and, and how, are you, how are you able to, are you able to kind of see the results of your success here trickling down a little bit? Oh, absolutely. I think, I think the reason that we're so successful is we have such an implemented structure from the age of 3 to 18. Every one of my guys, we have eight coaches at the high school on staff. And every one of those guys coaches in our developmental leagues down from three to eighteen, from three to fourteen. And I started when I was here for my second year, eight years ago, which is crazy to think about. You know, I started coaching a U seven travel team, and those kids are about to enter the high school, which is it's crazy. And, and for them to come all the way up and understand me and my staff and our system, you, you can't put a price on that. And that absolutely pays dividends down the road for our success. Now, I've paid, I've coached Ryan since he was thirteen. You know, I've coached Hagler and Cole since they were 12. You know, and, and them coming in and being comfortable with the program just makes us that much better. Yeah, and from the player side of it, how do you guys feel about that uh, on the, uh, from the player side? Uh, our relationship has been – it was a little rocky. I didn't know him. He's kind of a scary guy. <laughs> but, like, through those years, it's become a lot closer, and Ben's like a friend now. And so much easier to talk to him since he, we started so young. Yeah, I mean – I mean, at first I didn't really know him, and it was kind of a new thing for me. But I don't know. I wasn't too scared. I mean, I've seen scarier, but, <laughs> but you know, it's yeah. It's been remember he's <laughs> dictating the fitness. This may not work out. Yeah. Well. This may not work out. Be peppering well. him with not. compliments, making yeah. everything good. Right. <laughs> at least keeping it real. I gotta give him. I gotta I, give you know, that. I give that. It's a lot of. But I'm just saying, he's set the standards. Yeah, man, we'll, we'll see, though. No. Yeah, we've been growing. We've been growing. Yeah, I think Ben's a great coach. And, uh, yeah, there it is. There it is. All right. Hagler, you're not playing anymore. <laughs> you are, yeah. But uh, I think it really helped. I mean, it helped me a little bit coming in that I knew him somewhat, Lee, and it just it made it a lot less awkward than it should be. <laughs> just think of a word somewhat, Lee. <laughs> Did you just say you were a scholar athlete like five minutes ago? <laughs> hey, you create your own words. It's almost summer vacation, bro. Yeah, he's a great coach, but, like, it just <laughs> – he understands the team so well. Like, he knows what he has to do to push us for each and every game and how to prepare us. And, I mean, you've coached a long time. I mean – how do you figure out what works and what doesn't work with, with a lot of these kids? I mean, did it start when, you know, you were younger, you know, coaching the younger players, and then once you got to varsity, you know, as a coach, you kind of knew what worked and what didn't work, or are you still – obviously you're probably still trying new things too. But you know, it's kind of crazy, but, like, I wasn't all that good of a player back in the day. Um, but I started to coach when I was, like, 12. Like, I took a team of 8-year-olds, and I just wanted to teach them some things about the game. And it was like, what 12-year-old wants to be a coach? So I go through high school, and that's when I really wanted to become a coach. And, and I unfortunately, I blew my back out in college. And then through my 20s, a lot of it was really just trial and error. Mm -hmm. And what I've become is, again, I'm not a master technician or tactical awareness guy, but I'm really a good man manager. And, and it's knowing and understanding when these guys need to push and when they need a pat on the back. And once you figure that out and keeping them together as a group on the same path, the rest really comes easy. I mean, that's pretty impressive, especially when you get all different ages because, you know, 
sometimes you see freshmen, you know, they have a bad game. Their confidence could be down, and it could be down for a few games. Um, how do you continually try to build them up and say, you know, it's all right, you're going to make mistakes. We just have to correct it and move on. A Short lot of memory. those things are things that we've implemented in the program. Like we have a leadership council of probably the, the eight most important, not, I don't want to use the word most important, but the biggest leaders on the team. And we kind of divide and conquer. You know, we'll sit in the room every Monday and we'll say, hey, you know, Ryan, you trip. Like, what do you see? And he'll say, oh, well, Cole Peretti's struggling right now. And we go around the room and who's close to Cole right now? Somebody will grab him and, and pick him up. You know, and then what me and my staff do is we, we really try to manage the captains. You know, hey, Oregon's Alley's struggling right now. You know, take him aside. Let's have a conversation. Let's get his confidence back up. And those things have really taken a good stronghold in the program where we try to keep things ticking. Okay. And Makes you mentioned you, you have eight, eight assistant coaches, most of which I'm familiar with as well. You know, talk about how important they are to your program. Well, I, I couldn't do anything I do without, you know, Joe Neff and, one of, the, one of the really big things that you didn't say when you were giving me all my awards was the fact that Joe Neff was the state assistant coach of the year in Division One boys last year. You know, he's been here, this will be his 19th season. Wow. And he's just a man with, with no ego. You know, when I came in and, you know, I was an assistant for three years, the first thing I did was ask Joe if he wanted the head coaching job because I don't want to step on his toes. And he said, nope, you're better than me, you take it. And it was, he's just such a selfless guy. And that's really trickled down to the rest of my staff. I mean, I've got five volunteers that just want to spend time with young men helping them develop. And it's just it's an awesome environment that we've really kind of built. You know, and I'm very lucky to have each and every one of them. Yeah, you have, you have a great staff. And, you know, uh, believe me, I was not remiss in, in mentioning that, but I'm glad you did. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it speaks to how good you're, you know, how good you are as a coach and how, uh, you know, how you appreciate your team. I know that this this program's seen more success in the last couple of years than it has really in the in what I can remember from Brunswick, from Brunswick soccer having grown up in the program as well. You know, with I believe their third win this year, it'll be 300 for the program. That's correct. That's that's fantastic. Wow. Yeah, very impressive. Very very impressive. Um, you know, one of the one of the you know, and I know Hagler notwithstanding here, uh, you know, one of the one of the questions we, we, we always ask our coaches uh, that we come, have come on is, do you encourage multi, multi-sport athletes? So if they're not in season in soccer, once again, Hagler notwithstanding, uh, if they're in a spring sport of some sort, you know, is that something that you encourage or is that something that, you know, soccer, we need you to live soccer 24-7? I think so much of it depends on the kid. You know, I, I'm all about, especially at the youngest ages, like I look at my own son and my son does taekwondo, basketball, baseball, soccer. At the youngest ages, it's, it's to have them sports specific at that age is only going to burn them out and cause injuries later in life. But as they specify more once they get to high school, we really put them on a plan individually. When they, when they leave us in the fall, we do an exit interview with each player, and we kind of tell them where they need to go. There's kids that definitely need to play club for the next six months if their goals are to play on the varsity team. But then there's kids like Ryan McConnell who, you know, hey, Coach, I'm burned out from playing right now. I absolutely want to be in the program. I just need a break from playing soccer. And he goes and he puts in the weight room, work in the weight room, and he puts on 35 pounds and he's ready to go. So it really just kind of depends, you know, what that kid needs. Okay. Excellent. Fair Excellent. enough. Yeah. Gentlemen, uh, do you guys have any, uh, any, other, any last thoughts going into uh, the 2018 season? Any, any goals you'd like to share? Or, or do you guys have any superstitions you do before games? Any funny stories, superstitions that... Uh... See, they're all scared of this fitness test. You can just tell. <laughs> they don't want to say anything. They're just like, hey, man. We're Hagler's good. goal is to not get hurt, and I'll do everything I can to make sure that doesn't that happen. That sounds like an Ed goal more than it's a Hagler goal. <laughs> it's a Coach Ben goal. I just <laughs> happen to be a byproduct of that. <laughs> Every day. Listen, don't get him hurt. Any last words from any of you guys? I talk about the upcoming season. Any, anything. Is there a team you're looking? Any last words? Hagler's been following me. If I don't have anything nice to say, I'm not going to say it at all. That's all right. <laughs> well, either way, we appreciate all you guys. Yes, thank you for coming Coach on. Coach Dotson, unbelievable season by all you guys. You know, wish you guys nothing but the best of, of success, even coming up. You know, work hard this summer, and we'll look forward to seeing you guys uh, come fall. We'll, we'll definitely catch up with you guys sure. uh, either right after the season or maybe during the season, depending on how things shake out. We want to follow up with you guys as we always do. Absolutely. Thanks, as always, for having us on. You guys are a pleasure. Thank no you. No problem. Thanks for coming on. All right. That is uh, Brunswick men's soccer coach Ben Dotson, along with four players, Aaron Ogrizali, Ryan Utrup, Justin Hagler, and Cole Peretti, all underclassmen, all coming back 
uh, to reload uh, to defend their uh, Greater Cleveland Conference Championship uh, in 2018 and uh, get get the program to its 300th win and continue to build on what uh, what's been what's been going on for the last couple of years, which is which has been nothing short of amazing. Absolutely. Once again, uh, this episode, along with the uh, our previous podcast with the Amherst baseball team, will be archived on our YouTube channel, Sports on Tap. Also, go to Sports on Tap Podcast uh, dot com. Uh, it will be uh, it will be loaded there as well. Uh, guys, we've had uh, two tremendous programs on here, both representing you know the the end of the of the school year and what's going to represent the beginning of the school year. Yep. Um, you know, excellent, uh, excellent programs that we're lucky enough to uh, have on our show and, and talk about. Definitely. Yeah, and I think you see uh, the success. You know, they put in a lot of work, whether it's soccer, baseball, football. We have a lot of different guests, and, and you see one thing, they all work hard and, and put in the time. And uh, not only work. not only on the field, but in the classroom, too. Yep, so, that's important. Um, Somewhatly. <laughs> Somewhatly. Hey, that could be a new word. You'll find that in the dictionary. Online, though. I'll, Online. I'll put Hagler's trademark on it. I'm not going to take <laughs> that from you. All right. Uh, that'll wrap it up. Yep. Uh, for Josh Jeffy, Rob Traub, and Sean Duffy, I am Ed Dick. We are signing off here from Z's Creamer Bean, 2706 Boston Road, and we will see you on the other side. Peace.